Well, today we're conducting health checks on, on several bilby that are earmarked for a release back to the wild. And, and these, these bilby were born here at Taronga Western Plains Zoo and have spent time up in our sanctuary um, developing some of the skills to, to, that will enable their survival in the wild. And they're, they're about to embark on the next phase of their, of their life and, and contribute to bilby conservation out in the bush. Um, you know, obviously it's very important that we ensure that these bilbies have an, a maximum chance of, of, uh, of survival and, and thriving out in, out in the wild when they're released. So we will today make sure that they are healthy and fit and, uh, and, and will pose no risk to any uh, resident populations um, and also um, will not be at risk themselves from, from, uh, from lack of fitness. So these animals were, were trapped last night up in the, the sanctuary where they've been living a wild life with a degree of supervision for the last couple of months, developing their, their bush fitness. And, uh, and the bilby keepers have delivered them to us. So they're fragile little guys, bilbies. Hello, little fella. All right, well. So we will anaesthetise these animals. We'll induce anaesthesia via anaesthetic gas in oxygen delivered by masks. So the trick there is to locate the, the front end in the back. So there we are, nice and quiet. And like most marsupials, bilbies are very comfortable contained within a, an artificial pouch, even when they're grown up. Um, so we exploit that when we, when we handle and manage them. And so this is really an exercise in accessing a bilby that's lovely and calm and quiet in a pouch, and then delivering an anaesthetic induction while they're still in the pouch. And, uh, and then when they're asleep and have no perception of, of threat, we can access them and give them a really thorough examination. So we have very strict criteria for, for the bilby that will be selected for release to Sturt National Park. They've got to be grown up. So there's a minimum body size, but not too old. We want them to be, to be, you know, to be relatively young and vigorous. So no bilby older than two years of age will be released. We need to check the pouch of any female. How are we going? Steady on little one. Right, almost. And make sure that if there is a pouch young present, that it's, a, it's at a stage of development um, where the risk of any complications arising from travel or release will be minimal. What do you reckon, Joe? Mm -hmm. Ta da, come out and meet your public. <laughs> Sweet little things. You can see those real digging claws and typical long ears. Differentiate them from bandicoots, which can look similar. At around about 150 beats per minute, which is pretty normal for a small mammal, small marsupial mammal of this size under anesthesia. Just grab a temperature. A little male, this one. No pouch examination required. Mm. Should do, yeah. So, um, so you know, obviously, establishing, confirming the animal's individual ident identity is very important. Um, so we scan, we, we we identify all of our animals at the zoo by microchip, which is implanted under the skin, just like your pet dog or cat at home. Um, and you know, it's very important for veterinary health record keeping that we know exactly who we're dealing with at all stages of the animal's life. And that'll, that'll remain very important when the animal's released, because in the future, um, you know, the animal may be recaptured out at Sturt and, and, and reassessed and have a health check or, or whatever, and it'd be really important to, to be able to match the individual up to its, uh, to its history. 34.1 degrees C, that's very normal for a marsupial. All right, we'll have a bit of a quick look at the typical bilby dentition there. What we call a polyprotodont dentition with prominent canines and multiple incisors and 
cheek teeth adapted for a little bit of shearing and a little bit of grinding, all appropriate for the omnivorous diet. 780 grams, Joe. So this bilby's, you know, as we, as we mentioned, this bilby's been living a, a wild life, you know, foraging in a wild situation up in our sanctuary um, and has a lean body condition, which, which is, you know, is, is, is to be expected for an animal making its own way in the bush. So I'd probably give her a, probably a two to three out of five body condition score. I'm just gonna spin him over, Joe. Parasites had a beautiful, soft, silky coat and almost a tortoiseshell kind of pattern there. So an important part of, of the health assessment, I mean obviously the clinical examination is important or the, the physical examination is important, but it's also very important that we we take additional samples for laboratory testing just to give us additional assurance that the animal is in is in good health and is and is fit for for release. Um, but also um, storage of those samples, um, which we will keep in our in our archive here at the zoo, in the event that they may be required for future disease investigation. Um, so, so you know, it's a it's a really important part of of um, insurance that the release project and the, and the population will, will remain healthy and that any health issues that might crop up in the future um, can be investigated um, with those samples. Bilbies are fossorial, they, they, they dig burrows and spend a lot of time in their burrow, particularly during the day out in the desert environment in which they live where it gets very hot and, um, and they require to dig to, to unearth plant material and chase insects, which are part of their diet. So. so I'm taking blood from the femoral vein. You know, one of the challenges of bilby medicine is your patients are quite small and their vessels are small. So, um, <laughs> Not as bad as a plains one, do it? Yeah. So, so you know, really, it only remains for me now to to review the animal's pre-existing medical record. We know who he is now um, by virtue of the microchip. So we'll compare the clinical data that we have um, that we've recorded, collected, and recorded today with his previous data, and satisfy ourselves that uh, that. Um, you know that he's tracking well, and also um, we'll await his blood results. So we'll we'll send a portion of that blood sample off to the laboratory for routine hematology and biochemistry analysis, and that'll give us a lot of information, additional information about the animal's health. But uh, based on clinical exam, he looks pretty good. Great. Well, he's he's recovering nicely from his anaesthesia, but I think. Um, you know, I think we're, we're pretty comfortable that he's a really, he's an ideal candidate for release. He's, he's, uh, he's of the appropriate age. Um, he's obviously survived and thrived under, under wild um, circumstances and he's sort of been road tested up in our sanctuary, if you like. Um, you know, and a, a physical examination checks out and, you know, as soon as we, we get our blood results back and, uh, you know, and, 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 um, and, and, uh, and they demonstrate that he's in good shape, then, um, then he'll be he'll be on the road to Sturt.